Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape. In today's video tutorial, I'll be talking about load testing a file transfer server with MFD Monitor. When you're operating a managed file transfer server, or even just an ordinary file transfer server, it's important to know the limitations of your system before those limits are breached. That way, you can assure high availability and avoid having to face either irate end users who just had one too many failed connections, or worse, a major disruption resulting from a system overload. For instance, if you know that, given certain conditions, your system can only handle 1,000 users downloading and uploading files at the same time, then you can limit the number of concurrent users to a number wherein acceptable or even optimal performance is assured. This is particularly important if you're running a managed file transfer server like Jscape MFT Server, which can support a lot of security and automation enabling features. A typical Jscape MFT server admin may wish to enable a number of features like automatic virus scanning, open PGP encryption, email notifications, and others which can really help enhance security, efficiency, and administration of file transfers, but of course also need more system resources. Being able to conduct load tests can help you determine how your server would react if certain features are enabled. Let's say you want to automatically protect each user's uploaded files with the open PGP encryption feature. If you already know that your organization's file transfer activities can easily hit 500 concurrent users at any given day, then you will want to run tests on your server first under those conditions plus encryption before actually deploying the server. Or when you set out to choose a virus scanner solution for your automatic virus scanning operation, for example, you might want to test each of your favorite antivirus solutions first before actually deciding which one to buy. Normally, when people choose a virus scanner, they only focus on ease of use and the number or types of viruses the scanner can detect. With a load tester, you can now simulate concurrent connections and add CPU and memory consumption as additional criteria for comparison. There can be several other use cases. In fact, I use a series of load tests to compare the connection times of 1024, 2048, and 4096 bit encryption keys, the findings of which I published in the blog post, choosing key lengths for encrypted file transfers. I've included a link to that in the description. The estimates you make regarding your managed file transfer system's limitations should not be obtained from pure guesswork. Otherwise, it would lead to system resource allocations that may be either way too much or way too little. Or you could end up setting limits to your end users that are either way too conservative or too bloated. In order to help admins make estimates that are as realistic as possible, we came up with a solution called Jscape MFT Monitor. This is a platform independent load testing and monitoring application. That means you can run it on Windows, Linux, Mac OS X, Solaris, and other platforms. A Jscape MFT Monitor load test will allow you to test the load capabilities of your secure file transfer server by enabling you to simulate a variety of simultaneous upload and download scenarios wherein you can change certain variables such as the file size, number of users, and the amount of time before the next user performs an upload or download, also known as ramp up period. Let's now have a quick look at how a load test looks like. To do a load test, you need to create what we call a monitor. To do that, go to the monitors module and click the add button. You will then be asked to specify a file transfer protocol, which will then be used to transfer test files during the load tests. Use a file transfer protocol that your users actually use to exchange files with your file transfer server. Here, I've selected SFTP, but you can also choose FTP, FTPS, so on and so forth. After clicking OK, you'll be brought to the Add Monitor dialog, where you'll have to enter information needed for the load test. Start by entering a name for the monitor, the IP address or host name of the file transfer service whose performance you would like to test, and the corresponding port number. The private key section is for load tests on SFTP servers that require public key authentication. 
If you scroll down a bit more, you'll reach the access section where you can enter a username and password if you just want to authenticate using a single user. And alternatively, you can also upload a list of usernames and corresponding passwords via the upload credentials file option. Notice what you've seen so far are just connection settings, which will enable you to connect to the SFTP service you want to run a load test on. The main load test parameters, however, are found in the load and alerts section, specifically in the dialog box that appears if you click the first of two settings buttons. The settings inside the dialog named load settings are the variables I mentioned earlier. You can also ask the program to create a dummy file of a specified size, or you can select your own, which will then be used in the simulated upload and download sessions. Once the required fields have been entered, just click the OK button. You can start the test immediately or just save for later. Now, assuming you just saved it, you can run the test at a later time by going to the monitors module, selecting your desired monitor, and then clicking the start button. When the test is done, the result will be displayed in the results tab. To view a specific test result, just select it from the list and then click view. You can also simply double click it. Here are some average values of a load test I took wherein I simulated 50 users downloading and uploading a 1 MB file each with only a 1 millisecond ramp up period. And here's a graph of the same test showing the upload speeds experienced by each client. One thing you might want to do when running these load tests is to check your server's CPU and memory consumption. So this is what I got on my server when running a load test with 50 users, each uploading a 1 megabyte file and a ramp up period of 100 milliseconds. Let's modify that a bit by increasing the upload file to 10 MB the number of users to 100 and the ramp up period to 10 milliseconds. So if you go to the server now, notice that I now have a much higher CPU and memory consumption. Now for our last load test, let me go to MFT server and set up a trigger that would automatically PGP encrypt all uploads. And then let's make some changes to that load test. Let's add more concurrent users. And let's run that. So now, if we look at the CPU and memory consumption, you'll notice that the CPU is mostly 100% and the memory consumption is much higher now. As you can see, all these tests will give you an idea what your ideal computing resources should be before you actually deploy your server in a production environment. That's it. Now you know how to run load tests on your file transfer servers using Jscape MFD Monitor.